So my name is Robert Powell. This is my converted SV650E uh, electric motorcycle um, that I built um, over about the course of four years. Um, it was uh, uh, an endeavor to start with, and uh, it kind of became just you know one of the things that I enjoy doing. Um, completely road legal and uh, completely road insured, um, and it's road driven as well. Um, I haven't fully tested it, but uh, it's been it's been on the road a couple of times, and it's uh, it's quite happy on the on, on on the tarmac. Theoretical top speed is about 189 miles an hour. Um, it's uh, it's definitely uh, quite quite fast, and the acceleration is absolutely there to with with no problems. So uh, range is roughly about 80 miles, uh, give or take. Um, depending, of course, you know how you drive, you know that can be more or less. Um, if I keep it in the city, then of course that can get up to 100 plus. Uh, theoretical range on just city driving it, you know, 35 miles an hour is about 120 miles theoretical. So flexibility of charging was, you know, one of the things that I the, that I, I I keyed in on at the very beginning because, uh, you know, five years ago. Uh, chargers, you know, weren't as uh, ubiquitous as they are now. You know, with with Tesla superchargers out there and, and wall chargers and J172s in, in general. So, back here, through the super secret uh, spot, I have the uh, the two mean wells back here, um, and they run out to on the side here. I've just got it hanging out today, but uh, this is just my my standard, you know. Uh, charge point and I did have my, my J1772 there as well and it was all in a nice 3D printed enclosure um, however uh, I, I took that off uh, for just, just the a, trip here. A pair of Meanwell power supplies. Yeah so there, these huh? are the Meanwell HLG um, 48s. Um, I've over tuned them to 58 volts each um, and released full current on them so I have uh, full carrying capability of, of six amps total. Yeah, and you just do that through potentiometers yeah, the, 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 right the, under there. Yeah, there's two potentiometers there. And the nice thing is I've got um, these two bolts on here and there's two more just uh, on the other side there. Um, and I can actually, you know, drop it down and, and modify it if I need to and then put it back up again. Nice. Um, I did think about adding a, a potentiometer in line with it um, so that I could, you know, vary the charging if I needed to. Sure. But, you know, the, the, the BMS and, and everything else just handles the, the, the change in there quite nicely. Um, this is actually, you know, a little safety thing I put on, um, which is actually it flashes the back brake light um, in, a, in a pulsating flash to, uh, to try and get someone's attention before they, uh, they, they run me over. So this motor actually started um, its life. Uh, it's a Mod Energy motor, um, and a 117 motor. Um, John from Mod Energy made it, and uh, he actually sent it over to the guys at Zero Motorcycles uh, when they were building up their first production motorcycle. Um, and uh, it actually ended its way to Sevcon, which is the uh, controller that uh, Zero uses. Um, and it actually was their test bench motor that they used for developing you know, their whole profile. This is actually motor, Zero Motor 1. So it's 0001 um, is the actual serial number on this motor. Um, and uh, through a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend, it's how I became to, to acquire it. So it's a, it's a lovely, little, lovely little motor. But uh, it does have plans to be retired soon. Um, I do actually have a new motor that's going to go in it. Um, unfortunately, it's double the weight, um, but it's also double the power. So that theoretical top range is just going to keep going up and up and up. <laughs> so the, the, uh, there's 12 Nissan Leaf modules on here, um, and I chose those for a couple of reasons. One, the power to weight density on them is amazing. Um, you, you cannot get a better power to weight distribution uh, for, uh, sorry, kilo, uh, watt hour to, uh, to mass ratio out on them. So it's really nice, especially being able to, to get, you know, 12 of those cells, you know, in, in such a density. My whole entire battery pack for all those 12 cells only weighs 100 pounds. Um, so, and I get 102 volts fully charged out of it. Um, which is, is plenty for, for what this little, little guy will handle, so. 102 volts. 102. Fully charged. Fully charged. <laughs> uh, re 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 realistically, it's, it's, it's uh, closer to, to 98, but yeah, 100, 102 volts here at fully charged, which is what it is. It is fully charged sitting here, so. So this is uh, all, all the cells. Every single one is monitored, and they all run back to, to the BMS back here. Um, I have also this this little junky power switch on here. Um, right now, it's it's not uh, it's not the 
the, the best location for it, but it will be it will be moved to a different location when I get a chance. And then up here, I actually have my BMS display um, ready to go as well uh, that powers on and, and boots with, mm -hmm. with with the bike when I when I fully key it on. And, and I see you're. You got a 3D printed yeah. enclosure for that. Some 3D printed. Caps. Yeah. So there's uh, more caps. Yeah. There's there's, there's more caps. Those. They um, um, there's there's actually quite a bit of 3D printing here, both in ABS uh, and PETG. Um, if you actually look here, you can see the uh, um, the Kelly controller is actually supported by um, the uh, the 3D printed stands. Um, I have the 3D printed bus bar covers, the 3D printed um, housing for the BMS. Um, as well as uh, a couple of covers just to, to co cover up a couple of other things. Mm -hmm. um, at, at the beginning, I did actually have some uh, 3D printed uh, housings for the, uh, the chargers as well to, to hold them in place while, just while I was prototyping it. Um, and then I, I changed it over and actually made them out of PTG and, and full on metal. And, and you modified your BMS, right? I did. So the BMS, um, it's a uh, Ant BMS uh, that I got. Um, it was originally a uh, one of their 300 amp modules. Um, I actually did a, a lot of digging online, and I found the source Gerber files for the PCB. Um, and I, I took the the, the the source files, and being an electrical uh, well, electrical designer and, and PCB designer, I actually took them, uh, modified them to allow me significantly more current charging capabilities. Um, I figured that uh, with the modifications I've done, I've taken it to about 600 amps to, to fully charge and discharge. Um, and then I modified the firmware just a little bit to, to accommodate that. So it's a, it's a full 24S BMS, protected and, and ready to go on, on charge and discharge. Okay, so I'm, I made a brand spanking new board. Um, I, I called up uh, some, some PCB manufacturers in China and got them to, to manufacture the boards for me. Um, and actually then I bought them home. Um, I'm IPC certified for soldering. Um, and so I soldered them all the SMTs and the through holes myself, um, changed the copper um, and went to thicker copper bars, um, changed the MOSFETs, went to, to beefier MOSFETs. Um, so basically every every, Every point that I could think of a failure just got beefed up, um, and and that's where where that came from. So, that's, I, I can tell you're proud of that. Yeah, I am. <laughs> it definitely <laughs> it's it, it's one of my favorite things. The the only thing that I wish I'd done a little bit differently is you know maybe modified uh, and put a little bit of overhead on it uh, to to give me a little bit more current capability for the future, but. So the DC to DC is uh, just up here, and I'm actually going to pull the the magical pin here, and. Uh, it takes a, a, a second to do, but I'm able to actually pop this off. Oh, that's a two part, that's nice. Yeah. So I can actually separate it out if I need to. And uh, there is everything for it. So wow. as you see, more, more 3D printed parts in here. Uh, this is the, uh, the, the prototype DC-DC that uh, Kelly made. Um, this one is unique, so most 12-volt uh, systems run at 13.5 volts or 13.8. I actually had them tune this one down to 12 volts exactly um, because I wasn't going to be running a, a gargantuan amount of uh, electricity through it, so I didn't need you know, anything else other than... So you're, you're powering instead of charging I'm powering, it, yeah. I'm, I'm literally just on power only. I'm not on charge. Um, some some mounts that uh, that go on that, that actually hold the whole thing together. And that's 3D printed. Yeah, this is uh, 3D printed in PETG. PETG back here for my uh, my DC DC. So this is just a, a little distribution block that I made. Yeah. Um, so my main power comes in here, and then it splits out. Um, the reason for the split is I needed uh, 12 volts running up here to uh, to control everything for for the actual bike. So uh, that's all run through these these two very small cables. Mm -hmm. um, so that runs up to the the switch and to the the dash and controls all that up there. Um, and, and then here, of course, we got the heat sink. Yeah, for the controller. this is the heat sink for the controller, um, and then it, it sits in back here through a, a, a and again another 3D printed. Uh, um, piece that, that holds it securely in, in location. Nice, um, it's real clean. Th that's, that was what I was going for, is that you, know, you don't actually need to have the tank on to, to, to drive it. You can actually you know, tank off and, and, and drive it like you would, uh, just to, to give a little bit of, uh, of fun to it. Um, it really freaks people out when you, uh, when you don't have a tank on, and all of a sudden you, you, you're riding by them. Um, but uh, the, yeah, and on a sport bike, it, 
um, it looks less wrong to not have exactly. a Exactly. Um, and then, of course, you know, my severely uh, gutted uh, tank. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was uh, from a crash. We just don't talk about that one. <laughs> but uh, the, the, the pretty side of it is, is what really matters. <laughs> um, as you see, also some, some 3D printed spacers up here just to, to hold it in. So this tank is actually from a GSX-R1000. Um, I, the original SV tank on it is it was just completely a, a waste. Um, so I actually found this one extremely cheap. I think it was about $15, and I, uh, I cut it off and, and changed it out for, for what I needed. Um, I've also changed the, uh, the suspension out. This is a Kawasaki 636 suspension on it because I needed more, uh, more beef on the, the rear end. Um, actually, the first time I spun it up, um, the, uh, the, the uh, swing arm actually torqued itself, and I actually had to replace the, the swing arm completely wow. uh, just from the amount of torque when it was uh, launching on its first go. Um, I ended up on my, uh, my, my high knee, but uh, that's beside the point. <laughs> so I, I see the aluminum plate that you have for your motor yep. mount. It's, it looks it's actually, pretty nice. Did yeah. you do CNC machine? I did. I, uh, so the, the first version of it was done by hand. Um, I'm, you know, I'm very mechanically inclined to, to, to do it. Um, and then I, for the generation two and the generation three, I actually went and uh, I have my own CNC. I have a Shifoko uh, 3XL and actually machined it myself. Okay, so and that's, that's one of kind of the, the, the consumer maker Yeah, the consumer, CNC. consumer maker CNC. Um, I did all the G-code for it myself and, and, and got it there and then uh, put it all uh, put on there. Um, I think I've actually got plate one on here today. I can tell because of the, the, the janky cutting around the, the battery pack. Yeah, a little, um, a little extra modification. Yeah, but um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a lovely little motor mount and it's, uh, it's held in, uh, in this location here in, in the bottom and the, the main pickup point. So I did use the stock factory points um, and that's one thing that's actually very specific is when you do go to register this, especially when you've, you've done it, is they will ask you, have you modified the frame in any way, shape or form? And I wanted with 100% certainty to say, no, I have not modified the frame in any way, shape, or form. This is 100%, uh, you know, as it would be from the factory. I could go down to, to eBay and go pick up a Suzuki motor and bolt it back in. Not that I ever would, but I could pick one up and, and bolt it in with, with zero problems. And so your, your drive. You can modify the, the drive and you can modify accessories that bolt onto it, but you cannot modify the actual stock frame itself. So in my instance, the stock frame ends right here. It is just this chunk of a, a, um, solid aluminum that comes up to the headstock and then back to the, the, the rear pickup point. Right, so that, different shocks. Different, di different uh, shocks, different tree. fork, different triple tree, different rear end. I could put a, you know, a, a GSX-R rear end on here if I wanted a more sportier look. Sure. Um, if, I, if I wanted more space for more chargers, I could actually get an you know, extended tail, basically, uh, that would allow me to do that. Mm. But um, no, the, the, the specification is this piece here, this actual main frame, um, is what actually was is specific for requirements. I'm, I'm so glad for, for Fully Charged to, to ask me to come out here and, and bring this out and, and show people you know, what, what you can do with a, a, taking a, a nice engine to, a, to, a, to electric. And uh, thank you for you for, for, for this interview. So. For more on this project, check out sv650e.com for Robert's webpage. And as always, we would love it if you would subscribe to this channel so you always get to see the latest on DIY and electric vehicles. And until next time, stay charged up.